With abundant deep waters surrounding our state, Michigan has played a vital role in the shipping industry for over 200 years. Port Huron, sitting at the foot of Lake Huron at the mouth of the St. Clair River, serves as the gateway to the western Great Lakes. For over 185 years, mariners traveling downbound on Lake Huron have taken comfort in knowing that Safe Harbor was close by upon seeing the beam from the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse. As the shipping needs on the Great Lakes increased in the 1820s, so did the need for a navigational aid at the mouth of the St. Clair River. In August of 1825, the first lighthouse in Michigan was built at Port Huron. The first tower was located near the base of the present-day Blue Water Bridges. In 1828, the poorly constructed 32-foot tall stone and brick tower was severely damaged during a September storm and collapsed two months later. In early 1829, Congress appropriated funds to build the second Fort Gratiot Lighthouse. In April of that year, Lucius Lyon was awarded the contract for construction of the new lighthouse. This time the tower was built further north so that it could be clearly seen by ships approaching the mouth of the St. Clair River from Lake Huron. Lyon, who later served as one of Michigan's first senators, contracted with Truman Beecher to construct the tower. Construction plans called for a 65-foot high tower of stone or brick, 25 feet wide and 5 feet thick at the base, tapering to 12 feet wide and 2 feet thick at the top, with an octagonal iron lantern. The plans also called for the construction of a brick or stone keeper's dwelling. The contracted price was $4,445, with an extra $55 budgeted for adding the old argon lamp in the new tower. Construction of the tower and dwelling were completed by December of 1829. As the traffic on the Great Lakes increased in the 1850s, so did the need for improved navigational aids. Congress created the U.S. Lighthouse Board in 1852, which provided regulations on lighthouse construction and improvements. These changes would soon be felt at the Fort Gratiot Light. In January of 1857, a fourth-order Fresno lens was installed to replace the old Argon lamp, and other changes would soon follow. New towers around the Great Lakes were being built at an average height of 80 to 100 feet tall to improve visibility. In 1862, the Fort Gratiot light tower was raised to 82 feet to accommodate the Fresno lens's superior range. That addition can still be visibly seen today. In 1871, a great fire raged across the state of Michigan, sending thick smoke over Lake Huron. The smoke and periodic fog created a visibility hazard, so a steam whistle was added to the station to help mariners navigate the narrow opening to the St. Clair River. The addition of the fog signal whistle created the need for an assistant keeper. To accommodate an assistant keeper, the keeper's duplex was built in 1874, a second fog whistle was added in 1881 at the south end of the reservation. In 1900, in an effort to replace the first-generation fog signals, a larger, single-brick fog signal building was built. The site would see only a few small changes over the next 30 years. In November of 1913, a great storm almost toppled the tower. To prevent future storms from doing the same, a hurricane wall was built in 1914 to protect the tower. The hurricane wall is a popular sitting spot today. In 1915, the federal government created the U.S. Coast Guard by combining the life-saving service and revenue cutter service. In 1923, the Coast Guard was granted property on the south end of the Lighthouse Reservation. In 1932, they built a new Coast Guard station and boathouse. That same year, the Lighthouse Service built a single keeper's dwelling. Although these buildings were constructed the same year, less than 70 yards apart, they were built by two separate government departments. In 1938, the Coast Guard added the Four Bay Equipment Building. In 1939, the federal government eliminated the Lighthouse Service, which was absorbed into the Coast Guard. The light station changed very little until 2004, when a new station was built just south of the light tower. When most of the Great Lakes lights were automated in the 1930s, the need for light keepers faded into the sunset. 
The Coast Guard maintained the Fort Gratiot Light Station from the 1930s until 2004 when they moved into the new station next door. In 2000, the National Historic Lighthouse Preservation Act set forth the guidelines for the federal government to begin the process of reducing lighthouse holdings around the country. In 2007, the Fort Gratiot Light Station was offered to the city of Port Huron. Due to economic reasons, the city of Port Huron deferred the transfer to St. Clair County. And on September the 9th, 2010, it officially became county property. The site, under the supervision of the Parks and Recreation Commission, was designated a county park. The transfer was the first step in the long process of restoration at the site. During the transfer process, a Save America's Treasure grant had been awarded to the city of Port Huron to repair the light tower. Built in 1829, the exterior brick was crumbling and the Coast Guard had closed the structure to tours because of the advanced deterioration. The grant provided funds that were used for architectural and engineering studies, as well as actual restoration work. A team of building specialists familiar with restoration were hired to determine the extent of damage and what course of action to take to stabilize the tower. The professional team determined, through thorough investigation, that water was trapped within the thick brick walls. It was determined that the bricks which were installed in 1829 were very porous. When temperatures dropped below freezing, water that was trapped in the brick pores would expand into ice, causing the bricks to break apart. At the conclusion of investigative stage of the project, the specialists determined the majority of damage was limited to the outer layer of brick. The team concluded that most of the brick repair would be cosmetic and not structural. In the fall of 2010, work began to restore the light tower. This undertaking would be the most extensive work completed on the light tower since the Civil War when it was raised from 65 feet to 82 feet. Crews from National Restoration faced a few unique challenges with this project. The first challenge was removing the outer layer brick and replacing it without the upper sections crumbling. The second challenge was access to the upper brick. The tower is in the shape of a cylinder that tapers towards the top. That posed a problem for traditional scaffolding that raises vertical. To solve that problem, the contractor used a unique mast and platform system known as Fraco. The Fraco system is a mobile system that works like an elevator. The gas-powered platform travels up and down on a single mast. The platform allows for mobility on which workers and materials can freely move up and down to different work locations on the tower. The contractor used three of these platforms, which allowed them to encompass the tower completely. As the outer layer of brick was removed, it was evident that the original builders of the lighthouse used dry stacked stone as a filler. The inner and outer brick walls of the lighthouse were used as retaining walls, with the stone filling the void in between. A bonding course of brick was used every three feet to hold the inner and outer wall together. Near the completion of the brick replacement, St. Clair County Park staff documented the installation of a time capsule which was placed in the wall of the tower. The time capsule was made of PVC pipe and was sealed to protect the items held within. The items in the time capsule were documents related to the restoration, photos, a newspaper, and a county newsletter. The location of the time capsule was documented on the restoration blueprints so that future generations will know what was done to preserve the lighthouse. The last replacement brick was set in the tower on October 29, 2011. In just two months, the contractor had replaced 35,000 bricks and stabilized the tower. Work to the tower, however, was not completed. The next step was retuck pointing the joints on the upper tower and in the service building near the entrance. In 1862, when the tower was raised from 65 feet to 82 feet, the contractors used a light yellow brick that was popular at the time. Known as Cream City Bricks, they can be found in other Great Lakes lighthouses from that time period. The Copper Harbor Light in the Upper Peninsula was built in 1866 from the same type of Cream City Brick. The project followed strict restoration guidelines set forth by the National Park Service and the Michigan State Historic Preservation Office. In order to adhere to the guidelines, historic styles of doors and windows were replicated to match the missing originals. Replicated elements in the tower were based off of historic photos. Once all the restoration work was completed, it was time to paint. Traditional paints do not work well on masonry, so a special coating was needed. The worst enemy to painted masonry is moisture, so a special coating that allows the masonry to breathe was applied. 
The coating allows moisture to evaporate from behind the brick, but stops water penetration from the outside. Adhesion of the coating to the surface proved difficult because of the varying thickness of the tower walls. In the spring of 2012, the final coats of paint were applied and the tower's external restoration was completed. Its appearance is identical to how it looked in the 1930s. On May 19, 2012, in front of several hundred guests, the lighthouse was open to the public. Among those in attendance at the ceremony were Senator Carl Levin and Congresswoman Candace Miller. A new era for the lighthouse had begun. Now that the tower has been restored, St. Clair County Parks is focusing on the site and its overall restoration. Five other historic buildings will be restored to their original appearance from the 1930s. Some of these projects have already begun. The work is being completed with the assistance of grant programs like the Michigan Lighthouse Assistance Program, MLAB. This program is assisted with replacement of several historic roofs at the light station. Due to the cost of restoration, the process for the Fort Gratiot light station is scheduled to take place over a 25-year span. In that time, critical projects will be addressed first, ensuring that site is preserved for future generations. The Fort Gratiot light station, which is a St. Clair County park, is open to the public with tours and programs being provided by the Port Huron Museum.